welcome to Sea Court Africa. Do you want to be there? Oh, please welcome the Glam Reaper, aka Jennifer Muldown. Thanks everybody for coming back. Hey, Thank you. You're just back from Vegas. Tell us all about that. Yes, well, Vegas is Vegas. It's crazy. There's lots of bright lights. Um, but I suppose the last thing you expect to see in Vegas is a room full of coffins and caskets and people talking about death and grief and loss and uh, a load of funeral directors. But it's. Yeah, it happens once a year. It doesn't always happen in Vegas, but I think we kind of go back to Vegas every two or three years. For the crack. For the crack, yeah. So it's always full on. I mean, when I, I actually, this is the first year I Insta-storied it. And so regular Joe Blogs got to kind of see have a scene in this world. And the responses I got were just hysterical. It was, I've never heard of this, but I get that a lot. I've never heard of a funeral convention. I didn't know that this was a thing. I didn't know you know, funeral magazines existed, um, but yeah, so it was always, it's interesting to get that feedback, because at the end of the day, that's who, we're all going to be there, yeah, despite and the previous topic, things, brains and all, we're yeah. going to be there eventually. And also, um, you know, that's who funeral directors are effectively marketing to, um, you know, it's, it's a business, and yeah. so they have to market, they have to do sales, they have to reach targets, it's, yeah. you know, well, but on the other targets. side, it's, it's a bit, perhaps a morbid sort of career path, for some might think it, but I, I actually don't. I think it's a lovely thing to do because yeah. in Ireland we have different relationships with funerals and other cultures have, they celebrate death yeah. in a way. And, to, uh, and, there's, and there's different ways of doing it. It's not that it's just like you're a three day wake and we all cry. I mean, other cultures really embrace it. We really do, but also Ireland is really noted around the world as to how we um, do the wakes and how we celebrate a life. But I feel like we've nearly lost a bit of that. I feel like we treated death um, so much better historically um, you know, when we didn't have the money, uh, I feel like now it's almost a cookie cutter where it's somebody's passed away and no matter what their religion, we get the local funeral director, the local church, and it's da 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 um, And that was actually kind of what brought me into it. Um, but yeah, one of the funeral conventions many years ago was in New Orleans, and oh they my really do it. God, that was amazing. I, I filmed the whole thing. We did, we did a, f um, a fake funeral or a... Yeah. Uh, a funeral at the start and the music and there were women who were paid to cry and it was and I mean the theatrics but it was phenomenal it was absolutely amazing you felt so energized I mean obviously we didn't have a nobody had passed away and, but that's uh, I suppose that's what I'm always about and um, when I was talking to a couple of the girls in the back room there it's um it's about celebrating a life and not mourning a death and I think that's what people don't really get difficult, it. yeah. And kind of more unusual things people are doing, or what's up and coming now. I know you were on the show before you talked about um, pet jewellery, yeah. so you cremate a bit of your pet and stick it in your jewellery, yeah. you know, that's quite big. But for, for human beings, like what, what, what's new in the free funeral world? Well, the, well, there's a lot, there's a lot new, and there's, it's always, it's always changing, but I, I believe you even had, um, a couple of weeks ago, the pink glittery um, caskets that um, people are getting in the UK. And so Ireland, is still a little slow at sort of picking up these innovative things and um, we're still sort of relying a lot on the UK to lead as to how we do it. Green burial is huge and um, green burial is becoming about that now. bigger and bigger and bigger. So there's a place called the Green Woodlands I think it's called in Wexford and they're the first um, green burial site in Ireland. So that's where you know there's going to be no lacquered coffins or caskets there's going to be everything is going to be as natural as physically possible you don't have to get embalmed embalming um, a body well yes it preserves it for a week and that's wonderful if that's what you want doesn't uh the amount of toxins that that puts into the body which we're then putting into a, the ground yeah. it's shocking and people wouldn't realize how much environmental damage there is with burial and cremation really? it's insane yeah and i mean in asia it's a 99.9 .9 cremation rate because they've run out of burial space which is going to effectively happen to the world they just have an awful big population yeah. um but then so cremation is the next option and cremation is so environmentally friendly the amount of mercury that goes up and in london um in new york actually which is where i predominantly live um there, you're not allowed to have a crematorium within Manhattan because there's so many people because when you think about it a body goes in it's burned emissions come yeah. out through chimneys in London they're effectively breathing in the dead oh, God. so oh, God. that thought alone I know it's, it's mm. horrific but people don't think that they just think oh you know it's a natural fire and then yeah. the body disappear like there is a bit of a yeah, I'm not wanting to know, which yeah. I get, I completely understand, and you know, so sometimes people don't know. That's why I let people see yeah. me as opposed to push the information on them. But there has been developments, 
and there was one um, I sat in on, on Saturday and you know 9 a.m. Saturday in Las Vegas most people are out partying or still coming home I'm sitting in a alkaline hydrolysis workshop listening what? To alkaline hydrolysis it can be called resumation or hydrocremation water cremation bio cremation it's got a million different names um, and this specific specific um, workshop was on pets but it's effectively the body is submerged in a liquid substance and is dissolves yeah See, the thing is, I'm not a fan of being buried, and I'm not particularly want to be cremated either. I was looking a few years ago, there was this guy in Italy who, who had a proposal for pods. Like tree, so you, they, you, yeah, you yeah. in a wicker capsule, yeah. and they planted a tree on top of you, yeah. and bombs your uncle. Now, so, is that, are we any closer to getting no. that here? So that's, that's, actually the, well, that's actually the thing. There's so many myths out there at the minute that it's crazy. Um, you really need to check facts and stuff. Yeah. But also, uh, and it's what I all recommend people do is a funeral plan now i know at 35 most people think you crazy and you look okay, at you i have to have your funeral yeah plan. exactly as the camera for a bit weird if i'm out there get your funeral plan sorted and then i don't have mine done i do and it's going to be so brilliant i will want to be there but of course i won't it's so it's <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> but over, yeah, who knows? energy can be neither created nor destroyed so it it or to it, according to you know if those pigs keep going maybe i'll live forever who knows i don't know funeral directors would not be happy with that previous uh, <laughs> slot but it's um yeah, it's crazy. They ha can do that for ashes, yeah. um, I believe is what the latest is. But even, so even in terms of cremated remains, that's another thing people feel like they're, oh, I can scatter these anywhere and it's it's safe for the environment. It's not. Um, the actual remains are ground up bone and the pH balance is completely off. So if you think that you're going to just put that in your it? garden and put a daffodil in it and Granny is going to turn into a daffodil. It's not. You need to have. Would it be off if it planted a flower on you and the flower died? died. And oh, that's shit. effectively you have to get those bio worms and those um, substances out there. Who you put the ashes in and they have. Um, it's I don't even know what it is around it, but it knocks off the pH balance and then it'll turn into a flower. And there, but there is. But you need to look into this sort of thing. Yeah, though. completely. And that's my yeah. get a funeral plan. But there is. Um, an Irish technology company um, called Eco Legacy that have, are developing a green cremation. And I can't really say too much more, but it's, in the it's fantastic. If Ireland could come up with the green solution for the world, I mean, how wonderful would that be? And I spoke in Boston, actually, so there's a, um, it's pretty much the biggest funeral convention in the world. Um, I spoke in Boston about Irish and Irish funerals and how we may have the answer um, to the green. Um. So yeah, it's, it's fantastic and it's great that I'm known as the... the uh, it's You're great for me, I think, that I'm known as the Irish funeral girl worldwide, but... Because Ireland is seen as doing it the right way. Yeah. Like in the wake in the morning and we cry and there's a few days and yeah. everyone gets together and celebrates the life in some Which way. Which is yeah. fantastic. And even the funeral directors in Ireland, um, sadly, because of finances and things like that, uh, the removal, which is kind of the gone new way. Nearly now. It's gone nearly yeah. now. Yeah. That's, I've noticed that recently. The removal doesn't help. Yeah. It's just straight to the church. Yeah. And most of the people prefer the removal. Yeah. Because they feel like they get to, yeah, they get to. So are you, like, do many people actually come to you to plan a funeral or yeah, how I does guess. it work? Well, I originally started the business as a funeral planner um, or a wedding planner for funerals was how I described it because people knew what a wedding planner was thanks to yeah. Ray, Jay, well, Jennifer Le Lopez and her, um, yeah, her wedding planning movie. But um, it, I, I, so I started with that, but actually Irish people found it, they couldn't, understand the difference between me and a funeral director because I'm not a funeral director. I don't embalm or I don't do anything to do with the body. I'm just party. more Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Basically, yeah. I'm all the good stuff. Um and so it didn't really work out. Um so I had to sort of I had all this information in my brain and so that's how the book actually came mm -hmm. about. I went and I met somebody and I said, Listen, I have all this information in my brain. I want to communicate it with the, to the public. Um this business is not really working. Um and so the book came out um, What's the name of the book? Uh, Say Farewell Your Way. So it's yes. es essentially there's three parts. It's one, what to do when somebody dies. Two, what to do if you want to plan your own. Um, and three, if you fill out the back of the book, the appendices, you actually have planned your own funeral. So it's very basic. Like, it, you couldn't have. And I actually, um, even if you go onto my website, Kel uh, Celtic-Ashes.com, um, I actually give the plan for free yeah. because I want more people to be planning their funeral. Um, and there is, um, there is an, uh, another... Uh, think ahead dot a here in Ireland, which is fantastic, which is a government initiative trying to get people to plan their own funeral, and they go further with the wills and the um, 
of these directives. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which I filled that out because that's so important. I mean, if anything was happening to me in New York, do I want somebody to pull the plug or do I want to be resuscitated? These are all issues we need to address. Now, I don't go too far yeah. into it, but I try and what I suppose I try and do is get all this information, which is not very pleasant mm -hmm. for all of us to hear, digest it, put it into blog or blog form or the couple of things that I write for or radio and TV and just and you communicate it to yeah. the person who doesn't really want to know, but yeah. kind of does. You I guess, I suppose, I'm, I'm terrible. I've never had the dream of my wedding, but I've almost dreamt about my funeral, to be quite honest with you. Because that's the thing, who will it go? What will it be like? Will it be a party? Will it be any crowd? Like, I know it's a, it's a terribly sad occasion at any stage, but it can be a celebration of life. What's the most bonkers, amazing thing you've ever encountered when it comes to funerals? And it comes to well, that is pretty cool. Oh, God, that's really putting me on the spot. Um, most bonkers thing I've come across. Yeah, or anything that was it, unusual. I mean, it, I haven't actually witnessed it, but in in the shows, uh, so and these these people have clients. Yeah, there was the firing your ashes in space. I thought was kind what? of yeah. You can have your ashes fired in space. I kind of thought, why would you want to? But if aliens took your DNA, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's then one of the personally, and I, I'm I try and stay as open as I can yeah. for everybody, but. One of the things that I have found, so some people will get um, somebody's ashes tattooed into their skin. Yeah. Right? That's a, okay, um, I, I think. But another one was somebody with a significant tattoo. When they passed away, they would have somebody take it off and treat it and Turn framed. It to develop, basically. Framed. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. Do that. If I, like, I'm yeah. having enough. If I go to their own, do not take my unicorn off me forever. <laughs> Stay on me and go into heaven or hell wherever I end up. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining from the show today. And of course, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, your website is again Celtic-Ashes.com. Thank you so much. Now, time for a quick break. See you back here in 30.